Hello, good morning, my friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here with Painting in Your PJs, and this is take two with trying to get a little bit better light happening on my video this morning. So if you're just joining me, welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. And this morning we're talking about how to use abstract painting, go away, Georgia, to boost your mood. And it's one of my favorite ways to play with color and texture on the page and to really shift how I'm feeling. And in part one of the video, I was having some technical difficulties, but I seem to have gotten that kind of figured out here a little bit. So if you're just joining me, welcome. I was sharing that I spent the weekend in Boulder, Colorado with my hubby celebrating his birthday. Boulder is one of our favorite places to visit. And I am just looking for some white paint. That's black. And we saw some of our first flowers of the spring. And they, we saw some crocus and some tiny, tiny little daffodils and some iris. And they just made me so happy that I wanted to come in and just paint some of those abstract colors onto the page this morning. Good morning, Judy. Welcome back. Thank you for your patience with the technical difficulties. It all seems to have ironed itself out. It always seems to be magical when you stop and when you start. I don't know why that works, but it always does. So in part one of the video, I showed how I got this page started by simply just bringing in and adding some color, but I'm noticing some of those darker purples aren't showing as well as I would like them to. So this is a page that I painted with black gesso, and now I'm just taking some different colors that I saw. So all the crocus that we saw were lavender and purple, and we saw some tiny little daffodils that were bright yellow and the most gorgeous iris, the most gorgeous iris, even though they were teeny, teeny, tiny, they had the most beautiful, they were like just perfectly open. And so there are many mornings, so technology stuff definitely can get me super, super frustrated. And so, this morning was a good example of how I started off feeling happy and ready to go and delighted to be here. And then my camera light was just all borked. And it seems to all be fixed now. And so I use painting in this way to shift my mood, to lift my spirits sometimes to express that anger and frustration that I'm feeling. And I'm coming in and adding some white, and I'm loving how it's brightening up the whole page, even though I am going to go back over some of that white with my gorgeous, rich violet purple that is the color of the irises. But I love how that white really pops out on the black gesso. And I was sharing in the in the first video, I think I'm going to go back over this yellow as well, and then I'm going to come back in with that neon again and get some more brighter pops of that yellow as well. But how giving myself permission to play on the page, to experiment, to express how I'm feeling in the moment. And other than tech frustration, I feel good this morning. I slept well. I feel well rested. I don't have a super busy day ahead of me, which I love having a quiet Monday to get myself organized. And so giving myself permission to just play on the page. And I also grabbed this piece of paper, so I'm going to set this aside to dry because I don't have my dryer at hand. This was a piece of paper that I created using found objects. 
and um, that I that from my found objects class. And I kind of want to just continue to add paint to this and create some really rich collage paper, and that might go into a handmade journal. But I'm also feeling like I could cover pages and pages this morning of just color. And the iris is one of my favorite early spring flowers for sure. And so those beautiful iris are definitely on my mind. We're also right at the spring equinox and the new moon. So there's lots of new growth, planting of seeds, energy out there right now. And I want to be able to sort of capture and harness the magic of that energy that I'm feeling. Me too, Judy. It's the motion. And right now I'm using just one brush, but eventually I will also change brushes just to get a different shape going. So I might even come in and get some big areas of yellow with a different brush. But we can use this kind of mark making and painting to call in what it is that we need more of. And this is something that I teach in my color-coded emotions class, which is actually coming up again the first weekend in April. I'm going to be teaching that live again. And I love teaching it. It's all about the connection between color and emotion. And I'm also working with a complementary palette. But I love purple. For me, it's very much about expressing creativity. It's the color of royalty. And for me, it's the color of those early spring flowers, the color of those early spring flowers. Again, I'm working just on a piece of inexpensive kids' drawing paper here. And so it, I'm trying to work very dry and let that color build up in layer. I don't want this page to get too wet because it will rip and tear. But this is going to make a really, really fun piece of collage paper that I can use for something else. I've been having so much fun stitching things together, so maybe this will become a background for a stitched fabric and paper piece. I'm also in the middle of the 100 day project where I'm doing 100 days of artsy animals. And so maybe this is going to become part of one of those animals. Who knows? But what I can tell you is that is I just sit here and let myself just have fun with the paint on the paper, calling in those colors of spring. I feel my whole body relax. I'm able to settle. And I definitely get into these moments in my life where I'm like, I need green. And we have not had a lot of green. And we drove out on our way home to a nearby lake and there's a lot of farms on the way and the fields are just beginning to turn green and just little teeny tiny shoots of grass in the field. And so I'm calling in some of the memory of that spring, some of those colors that I'm longing for. It's been beautiful and sunny, but it has been quite chilly and windy. And my husband grew up in a family of bird watchers and loves bird watching. So we went to a new park on Saturday and saw all kinds of beautiful ducks of all kinds. So we were outside a lot this weekend, which is our favorite way to spend a weekend.
And so to me, here's this simple piece that represents happiness, but it also, what I love about this is this is, you know, a gorgeous piece of paper that can be used for collage, but I also feel like I'm capturing that energy of expansion and growth and just having a lot of fun with that. And it's a great way to just take a, you know, a used piece of paper where I was just experimenting with mark making in my found objects class and turn it into something usable and beautiful. So I'm going to set that one aside. And bring this one back. And just fascinating to look at the difference, actually, between the two. So some of the marks are similar. And we still have a little bit of that black in the background um, from the, the mark making. But I notice my pattern and my flow is different over here. And I notice how different the colors feel on the, on the black background so nothing good bad or you know just noticing the difference and so playing with black gesso versus white gesso last week i talked a lot about you know painting on different substrates to experiment and try different things that you like and this one also i think because it started on the black feels more about the sort of theme of this idea of shifting mood maybe from that little darker winter more internal to the birth of these spring colors that are coming out so i'm going to come back in over the the top of the white and because i add the white now i'm going to get that violet just nice and bright on there and that white's probably not completely dry but that's fine and I'm going to get that pop of color that I couldn't get directly over the black. And I kind of like that the edges of it are still a little bit white and the colors just kind of blend. And again, this is my happy place right here on the page. Just me and a brush and some paint. and the marks and the motion become like a mantra. And the longer that I give myself permission to just sit and be with the page, the quieter I become, the calmer I feel, the more that I can connect to that energy and joy of spring, the more I can just be in that thoughtful place of how am I feeling really? What is it that I want today? What is it that I need today? And sometimes I might do this while listening to a recorded mantra or listening to music or even just sitting here in the silence. And I'm letting the brush do the work, tell the story, connect to how I'm feeling. And in a painting like this, there's nowhere to go. There's no destination. There's no end. There's no outcome. There's only me and the process. There's nothing right now between me and me, right? There's no thoughts. There's nothing for my inner critic to get up in arms about. And as this page grows, I will just continue to layer the paint and the colors, letting them all just continue to blend together. You can see I've changed brushes again, so I'm getting a very different mark happening here. 
but I'm maintaining the flow of the original direction of the lines. Everything's sort of flowing from this center over here. if we can get some of that bright green in there. And I can guarantee you that your inner child will love working like this. Free and open gets you back into that magical place of just childlike wonder and I wonder what the paint will do if I try this, or if I try that. What else is possible here? Maybe letting things get a little messy smush them all together, see what will this brush do. Almost feels like a burst of energy just sort of flowing through onto the page and then flowing up and out. I kind of want to maybe bring a little bit of white back to the page and definitely maybe some more of that bright purple as well. Just noticing the colors. And you notice the other thing that I did here was to work with a very limited palette of colors. I had two purples, two yellows, and two greens. So three colors in a couple of different tones, or shades, I guess, actually shades. Um, and that was it. Sometimes when I do these kind of pieces, there's, you know, I go crazy with all the colors. But I was inspired by those first little flowers that I saw, and they were all the same color palette. And the only thing that was different was instead of the black background it was you know just dark brown dirt and then these tiny little flowers just popping up thank you judy it feels like spring doesn't it and it just again it gives me that lift that magic that energy to just be in that place of play with nowhere to go nothing to do just me and the page and this one actually feels kind of done, except for maybe just a little bit of that white again. And then I'm thinking it's going to be done, and I may come and add some white to this one over here as well. But I'm really loving, this is definitely a mood-boosting piece, and I was kind of thinking it would be fun to have this little kitty sitting here, and so I may just outline that little kitty and have a a little black cat sitting in the corner admiring that burst of energy and that little bit of spring flowing out but that needs to get a little bit drier first and I'm feeling like I want something smaller so I'm going to come in with a really tiny little brush and just get some little burst of light it's a great way to create variety in your pieces, especially when you're working on something abstract like this, is to just change your brushes, which changes the size and shape of your strokes. And again, it's fun to just play with your brushes and see 
how many different marks can you make with one brush? So just like I did in my found objects class where I found things around the house and outside and made all kinds of fun crazy marks, you can do the same thing is get a journal and dedicate it to brush practice. In fact, that would be a fun thing to do on one of my morning videos is just to look at all the different ways that we can play with a brush. There's something about adding the white to these abstract, I call them energy paintings, that sort of pulls it all together and just brightens it up and brings it all to life. That always ends up being very magical. And I feel that desire to just keep going, right? To just keep like painting in more and more of that joy, more and more of that bright spring energy. I feel my mood lifting. And I love that I'm doing this first thing in the morning because this is what I'm taking with me into the day is this joy. Yep, and I think I want a, a silhouette. I'll bring that black back of this little kitty sitting here in the corner. And let's see, I've got a white stabilo here. So let's just play and see what happens. And if I don't like it, guess what? I can just paint over it. Everything is paint overable. So I'm just using a white Stabilo Marks All pencil. It's water soluble. So if I don't like the little kitty cat, it'll be easy to wipe it away. All right, so I have an outline of my little kitty here. And I've got a little bit of Payne's gray, which is kind of a, a bluey, blacky gray. And let's see if we can just get a little silhouetted the kitty on the page here as if the kitty is enjoying watching all the spring energy. We just put a bird feeder up outside our dining room window where the kitty tree is and Brad and I and the cats are all enjoying watching the birds for different purposes. And I'm okay that it's a little transparent and that I can see Still a little bit of that color shining through. I can see that little bit of the white also around the edges, which gives it a nice little highlight. And just adds an extra touch of whimsy and play to my page here. So this feels pretty fun. It's interesting, there's no purple in this and I'm wanting to add some purple, but I don't know that it needs it. All right, so I'm gonna do maybe a little bit more on this page and then be done for today with all our crazy tech problems. And I've got some interesting, this Payne's Gray just on my brush. And so what happens if I just come in and add a little bit of darker magic and energy to this page? And I often will work like this, having two pages going at a time so that I can move back and forth between them so that I'm not, you know, having to wait for something to dry. And I want to just keep the play going, or I might have a page like this where I was just cleaning off my paintbrush, knowing that can get used for fodder along the way. 
So it's changing the, the piece. There's a lot more energy by just adding the, the black to some of these lines. Creates a lot more drama on the page than was here before. Not good or bad, just noticing what shifts when I bring in a different color. These almost kind of look like roots coming down here. So this page feels completely different with that black background that had, uh, you know, the vibrant colors on top, some different le level of intensity. I think this one definitely needs more purple. I love this, and, or this is uh, Liquitex Deep Violet. Again, keeping my brush pretty dry. And it's amazing how we can shift the feeling of a piece with color, how we can shift our mood, how we can shift our intention, how we can call in something new and different just by virtue of using color. Interesting, just noticing, so it's important to turn our pieces around to look at where they're going. Like, I don't know which way is up, but I think this heavier black marks in the background feel more grounded over here. And I'm wanting to come in and maybe break up some of that black. And this page is also making me super happy. And I might take a whole page like this and just put it into a journal. I'm wanting to hum. So when I get happy like this, wanting to sing, sort of feeling that spring song rising up. Being in the energy of play, such a fabulous, fabulous way to start our day, just to be in that energy of play. And now wanting to bring back a lot of those yellows and greens and just continue to build up those layers. But again, this uh, page is quite wet. So it might be time to just stop, let them rest, not rush it. Because I am working with these complementary colors of the purples and yellows, I run the risk of creating mud if I start to get um, want to rush through and just continue to build those layers without waiting, waiting for them to dry. And so it's also important to kind of take my time, right, to take my time. Because if I'm not careful, Purple and yellow make a beautiful shade of brown. Now there was a lot of brown. If you saw on my personal Facebook page, I shared photos of the little tiny flowers. And it's just these little tiny pops of color in a field of dirt, so the brown would be appropriate. And this one definitely needs a lot more green. But it definitely needs to dry a little bit. But this one, so this one was fun to paint. 
but this one definitely has the the magic of the mood and the energy that it was going for. So just noticing the difference between starting with the black gesso and letting that piece just grow organically, having a lot of fun with this one, just adding those little bits of color as well. But this one definitely allowed me to really be in that burst of spring energy and to boost my mood inspired by just a few little tiny irises and crocuses that I saw blooming. So I think that's it for today. This is Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette and Georgia, who has come to say hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you, Judy. So happy always to be here with you. Sorry for the tech mix up this morning. And I will be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. No idea what I'm going to do, but I didn't know this morning either. And that's kind of how I like it. So have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. And take five minutes to play with some color. Put some color on paper and see what kind of magic you can create today. Thank you so much.